Hello and welcome back to another episode and a new series of how to write a song. Today we're looking at hard rock. Now, if you've been raised since, well, forever, you would maybe be under the assumption that music notation is for classical music or maybe pop, but something so authentic and pure and emotional as rock could never be written in notation. Well, I'm here to prove you wrong, sadly. So today we're looking at hard rock and what techniques you can use if you want to write a hard rock song. You see, last time we worked with pop ballads and so today we have a bit of a different uh, kind of instrumentation. Today we have a voice once again, a singer, but this time notice little 8 mark, it means it's an octave lower than before, meaning it's more likely a male who's going to sing it. Then we have a guitar and we have a bass and we have a drum set. Furthermore, I've chosen the key of B minor because I find that to be a very good key for hard rock because you can tune your guitar down to you know the B tuning and then you have this very yeah rock sounding deep thing going on and I've chosen the meter of 4 over 4 or common time because it all suits rock to have that steady 4 on the floor that I'm going to teach you about and then I've set the tempo to be 101 beats per minute because, I don't know, it's not, you know, you don't want your hard rock song to be too fast. You want it to be a bit slow, really. Because then you can get that heavy sounding four on the floor that I'm going to teach you about. And actually, I think I'm going to talk about that first. So what we're looking today is the intro, which in case of hard rock, most likely is going to be a riff. So that's what we're making. We're making a riff. And I'm going to start off with the drums because that's so easy. Now what I'm going to do is first off, something you hear all the time. Just someone, oh shoot, just the drummer counting in the rest of the band, right? So I'm just going to put those in there and I like to keep them in. This is not my, you know, recording of the song, but I like to, you know, remember myself that I leave those in through marking them in my notation. Now, four on the floor is basically just, well, four on the floor. So, you point out all the uh, all the beats, all the four beats there is in common time. And you change it up so you have uh, the kick drum on one, and you have the snare drum on two, and then the kick drum on three, and then the snare drum on four. And basically, you're just going to repeat that all the time. Now you might think, that's very, very simple. Hard rock is hard and it's also hard to play. How should something so simple be used in a hard rock sh song? Well, it creates this back driving rhythm that really, you know, yeah, creates a groove. So try and just listen here with the count in and the uh, drums. Sounds really lame, right? But what we can do, if we go in here and we put in a bit of hi hat. First, I'm putting in a crash, and I'm just putting an open hi hat. And I'm going to furthermore go in and put accents on all these um, hi hats. Oh, I didn't want it on the drums; I just wanted on the hi hats. And now you get this sound. might still sound very under impressive but trust me it's going to work because I, the thing is last time with the pop ballad we wanted all these syncopations and such because we wanted everything to be sort of mushy now we don't now we want very clear stresses on our beats because that's the thing that makes the hard rock hard right all the stresses so lastly I'm just going to create this little thing here just to indicate that it, at the end of every four measure it's going to yeah well it's going to make a little fill which isn't really a fill because it's just two extra hits and snap but try and listen and you can hear how it like takes the momentum forward right so now we need to work on a riff now you might be wondering 
Clark, last time with the pop ballad, the first thing you did was write out chords all over the place and, you know, figured out the chords that you wanted to write the melody to. Well, in case of hard rock, it's not really that chord dependent, it's more riff dependent, right? So instead of following a certain chord structure, you're following a riff and you make sure that everything fits that riff. So I'm going to completely ignore everything about chords and just make riffs. Now enough stalling, let's actually write this riff, right? So what I like to do is again to make even more attention towards the first beat. I'm going to create a little pickup and what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to go from the fourth note to the first note to the first note, right? So going from four to three to one whether it's just you know melody wise or it's chord wise very often works very well with rock music it's get it has sort of a rock sound if we just try and listen to these three notes right right so you get that rock kind of do 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 at least i think so um now i'm going because this is getting a bit deep and deep is good in hard rock but we also want to create some you know last time we didn't want our chords we want our chords to move very little to create that subtle flow now we want our chords or to jump a lot or our riff the notes of our riffs to jump a lot because then it creates more tension so i'm gonna just jump on my octave and i'm gonna do it um like this so what i'm doing here again is I have a stress on this beat here, even though this is actually a pickup. And then I have a stress on the first beat, I have a stress on the second beat, I have a stress on the third beat, and maybe I'm going to have a stress on the fourth beat as well. I am. But yeah, let's just listen to this, these notes so far. So that quick thing going on here, to me it creates I don't know, it creates like a groove, right? Because we have this very slow uh, tempo, really. So we can put in those quick notes and still create a lot of movement. Furthermore, before I'm going any further, I should remember to mention that the notes that I'm using here, you can see a B, a D, uh, an E, and there's no F sharp yet, and then an A, those are the notes of a B minor pentatonic, and that's the scale I'm using because pentatonic sounds very rock. A lot of great guitarists like Jimi Hendrix basically made their living off of the E minor pentatonic scale, right? And I'm doing it in B minor just because, yeah, I can tune the guitar down and make it sound deeper and more hard rock. Now, to get on with it, let's just, I mean, we could go down to the B again, but then we'd just be following down the you know, the scale, which might be a bit boring. So instead, you know, to jump and create some movement, I'm going to jump up to this A up here. And um, actually, then I'm just going to repeat those again, right? Jump down there. And those are the, you know, the notes of our pickup. Actually, also the notes we use in here. But, you know, we, this is our pickup, basically. We're repeating our pickup. So the note coming over here is the B and actually this is our riff we're basically done already now I can just copy paste this but it might be a bit boring to have the exact same thing so over here I'm just going to create a little difference and I mean this is basically this is our pickup so these two notes are where our riff ends so if we just change the end note of our riff we can basically change how the entire how how change how the entire song feels. That's what I was going for. So instead of going down to this D, I'm actually just taking this D up here. And actually I'm going to just make it longer. So right now we have this. So now we're over here and we also want, again, we don't want to have the same thing over here, but what we're going to do instead of changing this middle part, notice I left this measure out. This is actually the last measure of our intro riff, but I left it out because I want to make the last measure different also because then it creates, 
you know, it creates contrast to the rest of the riff, and it's going to sound good, trust me. It's something they always do. The first measure is going to be different than the rest. And what I like to do is, I'm just mirroring, really. So, here I have, you know, going from an E to a D, so I'm just gonna mirror that, so I'm saying from D to an E. Uh, and I'm going to create a syncopation. Mind-blowing, right, because so far we've always had our clear stresses on each of the beat, right? The first beat, the second beat, the third beat, and fourth beat, all stressed. Now we suddenly have a single patient. It's going to create a lot of yeah, contrast to what we had so far. And then I'm going to mirror, really. Um, yeah, so I want to have this one. What I like to do is I'm actually just moving around, so instead of creating a new riff to make sure that this riff or this last bit of the riff sounds related to the rest, I'm just going to copy what I have up here and move it down there. Um, but instead of taking it, you know, the exact same way, I'm going to move it around. So this last pick I'm, I'm actually going to use again. So I'm gonna say an extra note there so we can get it to be on the beat. And then we move it uh, down, so you know we have that E to a D, like we have that E to a D in our pickup, but instead of on the fourth beat, it's now coming the second beat. And then we can take this, you know, the fast thing, uh, which goes from B to A to an E, and you know, then we're back to our pickup, so we can end our riff. So before we continue on, let's just hear what we have so far. I like that. Now what we can do, because some of these things because of our B tuning, some of these things can be very easy to create into power chords, meaning that they are just the first note and the fifth note, right? So there's no third. So in the case of E, it would be an E and a B, right? And those that aren't like too fast to play can very easily be made into your power chords. So for an example, these could be made into power chords, that could be made into power chord. Um, and actually, I just think that, you know, our pickup and our primary note, our pickups, pickup notes, it's probably the right way to say it, our pickup notes and our primary, you know, one beat, I think we're going to make those into power chords and leave the rest as normal. Uh, meaning, these we are going to keep as well because, I mean, this is our pickup but moved. And we have already, you know, played the E as a power chord. It would be weird to stop playing the E as a power chord. And then we have our pickup over here. And now it's going to sound like this. So now all we're missing is the bass line and you can make your bass play the exact same thing as the guitar, but you know, for the sake of showing you other things, showing you some more tricks, I'm not gonna do that, and I also think a lot of time it works better to have it play something else, because, you know, it creates more movement, I think. Um, no, it's not something I think. It creates more movement. Let me show it to you. So it's going to play along with that pickup because those like that's like the most prominent part of our riffs. And that's the thing that graves the most attention. Now, instead of playing the exact same thing, I'm going to sh uh, play like the core of what's going up uh, going on up here now. It plays a B, it plays an A, and plays an E. So I could just choose from either of those uh, notes really but a B would be a bit boring because we're already on a B so to create more movement we should either go down to an A or go up to an E and now I'm going to go up to an E and here's why because we've just talked about how going from the fourth to the third is very rock and sounds very good and over here we have a D and an A but most some of the times we only have a D so let's just keep the D mm. and here we go from you know the fourth to the third, the thing that we thought sounded good. Now over here we have our pickup again, so we're going to just do that again. And that's basically our bass line in the riff, right? 
So let's just copy that over here. Now, over here something new happens, right? We have this one going up. So we're just going to mimic that. Mm. Basically everything we've put mm. into power chords we're going to mimic. So mm. these mm. are power chords. Mm. Um, now what to do here? We could go up to an E again, but actually what mm. I think I'm going to create that syncopation so that because we've had a lot of power chords and then this little riff or this little part of the riff here breaks with the power chord so I'm going to let that stand sort of alone by just holding this note instead of playing something actively under it and then we're back to our pickup going from E to D down to the B so let's just hear how that sounds so far And that's basically our riff. That's basically the video. That's our intro. Now I'm going to copy and paste this down here so it goes two times. But yeah, that's our riff. Thank you for watching. If you liked it, make sure to subscribe so you'll know when the next part comes up. Leave a comment if you have any questions. And yeah, let's just hear the last riff one last time.